Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, friends. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's a pleasure to be with you again, my St. Thomas family. I'm Arlette. I have the pleasure of serving as your canon for Transition Ministries in this diocese. And I bring you greetings and love from our bishop. I absolutely love the season of Advent. And it's not because of the pretty blue. It's because liturgically Advent is the beginning of the new year for us Christians. So happy new year. You see, the 8 o'clock service there responded with a big happy new year too, but that's okay. Advent is the time in which we prepare for and anticipate the coming of Christ. Personally, it is in the seasons of Advent in my life that I grow and stretch spiritually. There's something about the careful preparation, the intentional waiting, the managed anxiety, the joyous expectation, and the confirmed knowledge that Christ will come again that gives one the opportunity to dust off and sharpen the tools in our spiritual toolboxes. I know you paid attention to the gospel reading this morning, Bible scholars. So you heard how it places us right in the middle of some chaos and confusion and a real reason to be concerned, fostering an environment that lacks hope. This reflects the reality of our lives, of our church, and our country at times, doesn't it? It is a sequence I know all too well. And if I were a betting person, I'll bet that you do too. I suspect, friends, that you know what I mean. I suspect that each one of you could tell of a time where you have experienced chaos and confusion that was concerning, leaving you with more questions than answers. I know the God that we serve has heard those questions. God has seen our tears and felt our anger disguised as fear. God hears our cries for comfort and our longing to hear some good news. As we transition into this new liturgical year and season, may I remind you, friends, that some of our most significant changes and transitions in our lives often start with a period of chaos and confusion and a real reason to be concerned. You can think of it as a wilderness of sorts. But I know Bible scholars, you can be reminded that it's in the wilderness the Israelites spent 40 years wandering in a circle, eating quail and manna. It's in the wilderness Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. It's in the wilderness that he was tested. It's in the wilderness of sorts Jesus was led to the cross, betrayed, abandoned, brutally beaten, and crucified. Saints, I've learned as, as difficult as it is, the wilderness can be a, pa a place where spiritual growth takes place, a place where we prepare the way of the Lord. It can be a place where we wait for the one who is more powerful. After the Israelites left Egypt, they went into the wilderness. It was their preparation for the promised land. After Jesus was baptized, he went into the wilderness. It was his preparation for public ministry. After the wilderness experience of being crucified, Jesus experienced his glorious resurrection and ascension. And in today's gospel, Luke reminds us that the coming of the end is not a time to cuddle with the chaos and the confusion, but rather a time to cling to our faith in God. I am in no way suggesting that this work of being faithful to God and waiting on the one who is more powerful is easy, because it is not. Neither am I suggesting that we sit idly by. It involves hard work, and not just by a select few, but by everybody. 
because it has the capacity to stretch us spiritually, and it often is very painful but necessary work, work that we must do. So I hear you. How does this work happen? Who will guide us in this work? How do we get ready? I'm so glad that you asked. <laughs> As with any hard work, we have to ensure that we armor up and we have the right tools. A gospel lesson reminds us that heaven and earth will pass away, but God's words will not pass away. Friends, scripture provides the roadmap and the guide for us to do this work. We are reminded in the book of Ephesians, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. It goes on to talk about what that armor, what those tools are. Truth, righteousness, love, peace, faith, and prayer are just a few of the tools I hope that are in your toolboxes. Matter of fact, I know that they are. I've been journeying with you for the past three years, so I know that to be true. During the season of Advent, it might be time, St. Thomas, to open your spiritual toolboxes, and dust them off and sharpen them, and ensure that they're in good working order, because we're going to need them. We're going to need them this Advent season and for this journey ahead. We're going to need them if we're serious about preparing the way of our Lord, serious about being the body of Christ. In order for this work to happen, we must dust off the tool of truth so we can hear, tell, receive, and believe truth. The truth about ourselves, the truth about our church, the truth about those we love, and the truth about those that are hard to love, and most importantly, the truth about God. In our hearing, telling, and receiving, and believing of our truth, only then can we heal. But let me caution you. If truth is spoken, if truth is not spoken in love, it's violence and has the ability to hurt. But the truth spoken in love has the ability to heal. We must dust off the tool of righteousness to be righteous means that we are acting in accordance to divine and moral law, God's law. It means that we are free from guilt or sin and acting with integrity. Simply put, it means that we are treating others in the same manner we wish to be treated. Likewise, it's important to dust off the tool of love and peace and sharpen those because without them, we will not be able to get anything done as a community. If we don't have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, we are doomed and forever will live in fear and scarcity. Not here, not at St. Thomas, but in other communities where love and peace aren't present, petty-mindedness can surface. And we major on minor things, and we minor on major things, which is a recipe for sure disaster. You guys know those communities. A quote attributed to Jimi Hendrix reminds us that when the power of love overcomes love of power, the world will know peace. I believe this is true for the church as well. Lastly, every spiritual toolbox needs some faith and prayer. Our faith and prayer tools allow us to expect God even when, but rather especially when, we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I read a page in this book that I keep on my nightstand, and it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Somewhere in that book as well, it says we walk by faith and not by sight. Dusting off the tools of faith and prayer keeps us grounded and focused, and it keeps us on our guard so that our hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. What I'm saying to you today, friends, is that even though we have had a lot of hard work to do, we have the tools that will help us. 
I have full confidence in you that you can do this work. Full confidence that with your spiritual toolboxes, you will be ready when Christ or Emmanuel comes and without a doubt be able to rejoice about that. And that's some good news. Amen.